Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're an oldie, thank you so much for sticking with me. My name is Adora Ozoma. I'm a Nigerian YouTuber based in London, Ontario, Canada. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at how you can fill the use of a representative form. So if you're using a representative to help you with your Citizenship and Immigration Canada CIC application, then you need to complete the use of a representative form, which is also known as the IMM 5476E. Now, a representative is someone who conducts business with CIC for you and with your permission. This could be a family member, this could be a friend, this could be an immigration consultant, this could even be a lawyer. And the person that you appoint may fill out your forms and submit your application or even talk to CIC on your behalf. So keep in mind that whether you use a representative or not, the government of Canada will treat all applicants equally, um, you know, whether you have a representative or not. And it's solely at your discretion, it's, at your, it's your choice if you want to use a representative or not. So like he says here, you do not need to hire a representative. It is your choice. No one can guarantee the approval of applications and all forms and information that you need to apply are available for free at TIC.gc.ca. So basically you can do your applications yourself without even using someone to, you know, represent you basically, okay? So uh, moving forward, if you're using a representative, uh, they have to fill out sections A, B, and D of this form, which you're going to add to your application. So here, I'm just going to tick the check mark, which I already did. I'm going to tick the box saying I'm appointing a representative and they're going to be completing sections A, B, and D. Now, if you're canceling the appointment of a representative, uh, you're, they're going to complete sections A, C, and D. Alrighty, so let's see here for section A. I've already put in some information. So let's assume I, the applicant, my name is uh, Andrew Smith. So um, I've put in here that my family name, which is my surname, is Smith. And my given name is Andrew. And I've also included here my date of birth, which is 1986, December 1st. Okay, so if you have already submitted your application, the name of the office where the application was submitted you have to put all that in this section here and what type of application are you submitting are you applying for a permanent residence are you extending your study permit or are you applying for a new study permit or is it a visitor's visa you know you have to put all that in this section so i just put here for the purpose of this video permanent residence and then if you know your uci number you can put in here it's not composite that's why it says here if no so moving forward, um, section B, um, your representative is going to fill out this part. So we are assuming for this video that our representative name is Prince Paul. So I've put in here their family name as Paul and their given name here as Prince. And then there are two types of representative, those who you compensate and those who you don't compensate. So if they are uncompensated, are they a family member or a friend or a member of the College of Immigration and Citizenship Consultants? Um, if they are, they're going to put what province and their membership ID. Other, you have to then specify. If you're compensating the person, um, so it says here, uh, section 6ii, if the person is compensated, um, if they are a member of the College of Immigration and Citizenship, uh, are they in good standing and what is their membership ID and also what Canadian province or territorial law society are they in? So you're going to put it in here with their membership ID number. And then this is for Quebec. Uh, you also have to put their membership ID here. So we're just going to say here we are going with a family or friend. Um, otherwise, if you're compensating someone or if you're using someone who is a member of the I. CICC, you have to put in their membership number and their province and their membership ID and all that. Okay, so their contact information. So the name of the firm, organization, if applicable, um, if he's a student at law, write the name of the supervising lawyer and also the supervising lawyer membership ID. Their mailing address, you have to fill out all this information and then, you know, 
the country code, the telephone number, the fax number, and all that information. Then put in their email address if applicable. Okay, and then they are going to then sign. Okay, so signature of a representative, they're going to sign, and then they're going to put in the date that they signed. And then this section is only if you're canceling the appointment of a representative, if you've already hired someone, or if you've already appointed someone on your behalf. If not, there's no need of them uh, filling out section C. Okay, and then uh, this is your declaration. You saying, I declare that I have fully and truthfully answered all questions on this form and any attached application if applicable. I also declare that I have read and understood the statements on this form, having asked and obtained an explanation for every point that was not clear to me. So this is where you, the applicant, put in your own signature as well as the date. If you have a spouse, um, it says here signature of spouse or common law partner for sponsorship application, then your spouse has to put in their signature here as well as the date. Okay, so there's a warning here. It says here it's a serious offense to give false or misleading information on this form. So make sure that everything that you're filling out here is correct and accurate and nothing here is misleading. Otherwise, it will really impact your application negatively. And yeah, so basically you just have to uh, print this out. So when I'm talking about signature, you actually have to print it out and sign. <laughs> so you have to print it out and sign and then you have to scan it and then upload your documents if you're applying online if you're applying by paper then you can just mail your all your documents to you know the respective address okay so i think this is pretty straightforward um if you have any questions please put them in the comment section down below do not forget to subscribe to this channel i'm also going to be doing another video for this one this is for the study permits uh, made outside of canada i'm going to be doing a video on this one uh shortly uh i'm just getting that ready but for today's video is for the use of a representative and yeah i hope it was pretty straightforward for you to understand if you have any questions like i said please put that in the comment section and i'll be glad to answer that Alrighty, until next time do stay safe and i'll be glad to see you guys in my next video bye